Welcome to Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian Uzoeshi. Today, I am teaching on a very important subject in Christianity, which I have titled Bible Simple Truth about living a worry-free life. Uh, if you put that in other words, how to live a worry-free life based on the Word of God. Before we continue with today's teaching, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for utterance that I will speak to your people today boldly as your own oracle, that you will make my tongue as a pen of a ready writer. Father, I pray for the anointing of your Holy Spirit that will teach us and guide us and teach us himself and lead us into all the truth. Spirit of God, I pray that you will open the eyes, ears, heart of everyone listening today. Minister to them simultaneously. Take and give to them what you want them to get out of today's te teaching. You are the great teacher. I am just a vessel. Let the light of the glorious gospel shine on our part today. Give us answers for now. Father God, I thank you because you said if we cast our cares upon you, you will take good care of us. You told us to be anxious about nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let our petition be made unto you, that you will give us a peace that will pass all understanding. I thank you for this, O Lord, because you will overwatch over your word. You will overwatch over your word always to perform it. In all of this, I take no glory, but I give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome my friends to today's teaching. The title of today's teaching is How to Live a Worry-Free Life. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. This is a very important teaching. And if you get hold of this teaching, it will change a lot of things in your life. Before we dive into today's teaching, I want to read a text to you from Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 2 all the way to verse 4. Paul says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorance of the righteousness of God and going about establishing their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to anyone who believes. So, Paul is writing and he's saying that uh, the problem Israel encountered is that they, are, they walked in ignorance. He says that they were going about their own ways. Instead of going about the way the word of God says, they deviated and they went following their own traditions, their own uh, doctrine, their own missionary, things that they came up with. And you know that... Um, uh, he, he said that they, 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 they were zealous. They really want to do something. But the problem is uh, syncretism. They were trying to uh, combine the worship of idol uh, with Jehovah himself. And that's not what the word of God says. And there were so many things that they did based on ignorance. Because they came up with these ideas. They deviated from what the word of God said. And because of this, they did not get results. He's talking about righteousness here, which is salvation. But it is the same principle all across the border. Because of ignorance, people will lose results in everything they do. Being ignorant of something is not an excuse. So you can be zealous, but without any results, without any knowledge. It is very important then that we... Find out what the Bible says about every situation so that we don't waste our time doing things according to tradition or according to religious beliefs. And at the end, we don't get any result at all. Remember that Jesus Christ said that people err because they don't know the scriptures, nor the power of God. And also he said, the, he said your tradition have made the word of God of no effect. 
he told the Jews of his own days, he said, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life. But there are they that testify of me. But you will not come to me that you will have life. The Jewish people missed the time of their visitation. Jesus Christ was right there in their midst. Even though prophet Daniel said the time he would come, but they missed the whole thing. And because of this, they missed their time of their visitation. Why? Because of ignorance. Why? Because they went about doing things on their own accord. Why? Because they were not very, very sensitive to what the word of God said. So the same applies to us today. In Christianity, even inside the church, there are so many things that we are doing, but they are not based according to the word of God. These are the things people came up with. Human tradition, religious belief. And uh, Jesus Christ said, these are the things that make the word of God of no effect. So today, what I'm teaching today is how to live a worry-free life. Based on the word of God. It's not going to be based on what the religious people in the church said. It's not going to be based on what the tradition that people have followed for decades, even centuries, said. We are going to teach, I'm going to teach today based on what the Word of God says. The Word of God is truth. It is life. It is the one that has the message of eternal life. So if we will go by what the Word of God says about how to live a worry-free life, at the end of today's teaching, you will get a hold of that freedom. Because it is not the will of God that his people will live life in worries. Jesus Christ was so much against it that I'm going to show you scriptures today. That's, that Jesus Christ is not in anywhere in agreement with people living a stressful life. Life full of worries. No, that is not the will of God for you. So let's go ahead and continue so what is worry? Remember the word worry can be translated as uh, uh, to be choked, to be strangled, uh, to, to be strangled, to be, uh, to be, to, to tear off. So to be overly concerned about situations or things that can lead to emotional strangulation. What is worry? Worry is doubting what the word of God says. Doubting not having faith in the promises of God. What is worry? Worry is putting your trust in what the enemy says. What Satan said. What the cohorts of hell said. Uh, remember in Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job says, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid is come unto me. When we worry, we attract. It's just like a magnet. Those things that you worry so much about, it's just like you attract them towards you. That is why it's wrong to worry. Remember that about 40% of what, things, what people worry about never happen. They don't come to pass. So... Worry is not, uh, 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 it, it doesn't mean that um, you don't have to work hard. Are you hearing me? It doesn't mean that you don't have to work hard or be lethargic. It doesn't mean that um, uh, uh, you will never plan ahead of time. That's not what I'm talking about. You're supposed to work hard, put your best into the things that you're doing. But what I'm talking about here, being overly concerned about things and situations that will bring about emotional strangulation. That's what worry is all about. So, uh, now we're going to go into scriptures. I'm going to take you into scriptures um, uh, because um, our body, you know, this life that we have, the physical body, it, it, God did not design it to handle worry. It cannot handle worry. So, uh, uh, medical studies, they have showed, proved, that when we worry, it suppresses the immune system. And when the immune system is suppressed, all kind of diseases and sicknesses can be, will be able to affect the body. So, uh, let me put it this way. Uh, people who are drinking and smoking combine together 
uh, will not kill you before worry. Did you hear what I said? Worry, being worried or being overly anxious about things will destroy you before even cigarette and alcohol combined together will. That should tell you how dangerous it is to worry. The word of God is completely against worrying. We are the children of God. So our Heavenly Father tells us what to do so that we will live a victorious life, life that is free from worry. So now I'm going to take into scriptures. Let's see what the scripture says about um, Jesus Christ himself. What did he say about worrying? Um, if you have your Bibles, uh, please open them up to Gospel of St. John chapter 14. And we're going to read that verse 27. So Gospel of St. John chapter 14 verse 27. And Jesus says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the word gives, give I unto you. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is what the word, this, this is Jesus Christ speaking. The word of the master himself. He says, he says, he says, he says, peace I give unto you. He says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. He says, I give unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So he tells you right here that you have the authority, you have the power within you not to let your heart be troubled or be afraid. If we don't have the ability to do this, this will not be in the scriptures. But Jesus tells you here that you have the ability not to let your heart be worried at all, regardless of what the situation is. And within this teaching, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm, not only will I tell you about worry, I'm going to teach you the reasons not to worry. And not only that, I'm going to teach you how to handle worries. So if you stick to the end of today's teaching, you will get all of them in completeness. So, Jesus Christ said, he says, do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Which means we have the ability, we have that power within us, not to let this happen. But you know, there are some people, they say, I don't know what to do. I've done anything that I, everything that I know how to do. I just don't know what else to do. And they give up. And then they worry from morning till day and the, the, till tomorrow. And every day they are in that state of being so anxious about nothing. Remember that worry will give you so much things. A lot of things to do. Are you hearing me? It will give you a lot of things to do. But it will never give you any productivity. It will not give you any result at all. It will engage you. It will give you something to do. It will get you busy. But there is no result at the end. This is why it is very, very wrong to worry. Remember what I said earlier, most of the things that we worry about, they, they, don't, they never come to pass here. <laughs> you, 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 you just sit down and you, 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 you notice that they, it did not come to pass. Now let me ask you, can you remember the thing that you worried about last two years? What about last year? Do you remember them right now? No, you don't. You don't. Most of them, they did not come to pass. So you've forgotten completely about them. So let's go to the Gospel of St. Luke. I would like to read the um, uh, uh, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 12. And we're going to read uh, 22 all the way to 31. So if you have your Bibles, please open them up to Luke, chapter 12, 22, all the way to 21. And um, and I'm going to read the NLT translation. It's uh, easier to understand. So NLT translation, verse 22 says, Then, turning to his disciples, Jesus said, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food to eat or enough clothes to wear. For life is more than food, and your body more than clothing. 
Are you hearing that? He's telling you that your life is more important. It's bigger than the worry that you worry about those little things, food, what to wear, where to live. He's telling you now, he said that your life is much bigger than them. Verse 24, he says, look at the ravens. They don't plant or harvest or store food in the barns. For God feeds them. And you are far more valuable to him than any birds. Are you hearing that? He's talking about the ravens, the birds of the earth. Have you ever come across any birds uh, 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 crying? <laughs> Have you ever before crying and worrying about what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink? What they're gonna, how they're gonna take care of themselves? Have you ever come across birds like that? The ones that I come across, they are uh, singing, <laughs> they are joyful, they are eating something. That's the ones I come across. Take your time and watch, observe the birds of the earth, and see if you will see them in any mood that looks like they are worrying. Out. You will not. God is telling you. He says, "Are you not far more valuable to Him than any birds?" Your heavenly father tells you, he said, I created the birds of the earth and I take good care of them. They don't starve. They don't die of hunger. He said, how much more you that I have created in my own image? Don't you think that I will take good care of you? That's what the father God is saying here. That's what he's saying here. Verse 25, he says, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? He's telling you about the fruitlessness of being worried. He said, tell you about, he says, when you worry, you don't achieve anything. He says, there is nothing that, that, is, that is going to change in your life. Instead, it will take something away from you. It will bring sickness and disease to your health, to your life. So he's telling you, let me read that again. Verse 25, he says, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? It's not. Instead, it will take away. In verse 26, and he says, And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? He's telling you, he says, If worry cannot accomplish anything for you, he says, What is the purpose of worrying in the first place? If at the end of the day it doesn't solve the problem, rather it makes it worse. He says, what is the need of you worrying about? Anything at all. Are you hearing what the word of God is saying to you? Now, verse 27, he says, look at the lilies and how they grew. They don't walk or make their clothing. Yes, Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. Look at the lilies of the earth. He says, they're always looking bright. Shining, looking good. But they don't put anything to it. It is God who takes care of them all. Are you hearing what the scripture is telling to you? And now, as we continue, verse, 20, verse 28, it says, And if God cares so wonderful for flowers, that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? He says, this lady, this lilies, these flowers, he says, they are alive today, but in a moment they are dead. He says, if God takes care of them, why are you worrying about things? And he says, is it because of your faith? And he's telling you again, he says, have faith in God. Have faith in God. And he's indirectly telling you here that faith is the solution. And we're going to get to that later on in this teaching. Faith is the solution to worries. Verse 29. And he says, and don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. It's telling you very simple. Say, don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink. Don't. You have a father in heaven. He will take good care of you. All you got to do is to recognize that he is God. 
that he will take care of you. He says, have faith in God and you will not have this problem. Remember, this is what Jesus Christ is saying. In verse 30, he says, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your father already knows you need. He already knows your need. So he says, the people who are not believers, these are the things they worry about. The unbelievers, the hidden. He says, they go about worrying about all these things. So why are you going to be just like them, you child of God? You who is the righteousness of God? You who has the Holy Spirit now abiding in you? You now who have Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for you? He says, if they're hidden because of their un unrighteousness, because of their ignorance, if they go about worrying about all of these things, he says, how are you going to worry just the same way they do? Knowing that you have the heavenly Father in heaven who will always take good care of you. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 31, he says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. And he will give you everything you need. Are you hearing that? Now, remember this verse 31, because we're going to visit it later on in today's teaching. I'm going to read it again. So remember it, we're going to visit it again. He says, seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. Could be a similar thing in Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he says, all these things will be added unto you. We will get back to this verse later on. So let's continue with today's teaching. Like I said earlier, let me give you now the reasons why you should not worry at all. Try to get hold of this teaching. I'm not teaching you about what the people in the world are doing or what they're saying. How they're trying to overcome worry. Some of them will overcome worrying by taking pills, medications, going to counseling, and all that kind of stuff. This is the way the world handles it. But I'm giving you the Bible principles. The way the word of God said that you should handle it. Remember the word of God is the truth. It is the truth. If you're looking for answers, you're going to find them in the word of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what are the reasons? Reasons not to worry. First of all, we go to the scriptures. Because I'm, I'm going to give you scriptures and we will look at the scriptures together. And then you will see the, the answers are right there in the scriptures. All you got to do is to be a doer. When you hear today, you do. And once you do, remember you will get results. It must happen. This is what the word of God says. So remember in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. The Bible says, be careful for nothing. But in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your petition be made known to God. And he says, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guide your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? So he tells you what to do here. And he tells you the reason why you should not worry. Because if you do this, then there is no reason for you to worry about anything. When that problem arises, when the situation comes up that warrants you to worry or think about it, he's telling you the thing to do is to lay it, bring it to God in prayers. Remember the Bible says, ask and you will receive. Do not ignore it and say, God knows this worry. He's going to take care of it. No. First of all, you take it to God in prayers by prayer and supplication. And then he says, with thanksgiving, let this petition be made known to God. Present it to the Father Almighty. God in heaven, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And you are bring you this situation that just, that just arrived now. I'm asking you to give me light, direction, solution, and help with this. And in all of these things, I believe that you are my helper and that you will do according to your word. And I believe that I receive help right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I give you all the praise and all the glory forever and ever. 
you present it to God Almighty in prayers. And once you've done this, remember, you cannot care and God care at the same time. Is that is either going to be you or God? So when you lay it on his off, if we wait, when you lay it out on his feet, leave it right there. Don't go digging it up again and try to. When you go digging it up again, thinking about it again, trying to worry about it again, means that you don't believe that God took care of that problem. So you leave it over there. All you're gonna do henceforth is thanksgiving. Every time you remember about this problem. Thank God and say, Father, when I pray, and when I pray the first time, I thank you because you had me. I give you all the praise about it. And I thank you because the answer, the solution is coming. Blessed be your holy name. This is how you take care of it. Remember in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says, Casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. So you cast it upon him. He says he will care for you. This is the word of God. It must come to pass. Forever his word is settled in heaven. Bible says he watches over his word to perform it. The heaven and the earth will pass away, but his word will never pass away. Because he upholds this universe by the word of his power. So when you speak by faith, when you stand in faith, you will get results. Don't be moved by what you see. You may not see the result right away. It might not be a week. It might not be a month. It might even take longer. But if you're willing to stand forever, you are not going to be standing too long, child of God. So have that consciousness, the determination that you are not going to be moved because we walk by faith, not by sight. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when you make your petition, you present it to God Almighty, which is the first thing you do, stand in faith henceforth. The enemy, the accuser of the brethren, he will try to bring thoughts into your mind, trying to sway you from what you believe. But you got to stand bold and fight the good fight of faith so that you can lay hold of these promises of God in your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, another reason not to worry is this. God is God. He is bigger than everything. God is God. Yahweh is God. He is bigger than everything. Remember in Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27. And he says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Is there anything hard, too hard for God? The one that created the stars and the moon. Put them in their places. The one that created the seas, the oceans, and everything in them. The wind. The one that created the trees. The one that created the whole universe. And measures them by the spam of his hand. He's telling you here, is anything too hard for him? The one that sits upon the throne. Remember in Isaiah 6.1. Isaiah said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train fills the temple. This is the God we are talking about. He is bigger than any situation that come against you, any circumstance that you can worry about. Have this at the back of your mind. God is bigger than any trouble. In your physical eyes, it may seem big. In your mind, you may be worried about how is this going to be taken care of. But he says, don't worry about how it's going to happen. Let your faith be in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The one that is bigger than all our imaginations. Are you hearing me, my friends? Even the heavens of the heavens cannot contain him. That's what Solomon says. Much less, how much less the temple that he built for God. He built for God. So, stand bold and know that the Redeemer, your God, he lives. And because of that, you can always overcome anything that the enemy is trying to put out there in your part. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me give you another reason why you should not worry. You see, God has already given you his best. Are you hearing me? Think about this. Think, think about it very deep. I want you to think about it. God has already given you his best. What is the best heaven got? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He gave it to you. He gave him to you. In Romans chapter 8, verse 32, Bible says, He that spared not his son, his own son, but delivered him up to us all. He says, How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If he gave us Jesus Christ, the best that heaven got, what is your problem to him? Little things? How to pay your bills? How to have a family, a solu a, 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 a have to solve family problems? How to get a car? How to get a job? How to get healed? How to uh, 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 bring that child that's gone away from your house home? Is that what your problem is? He says that God has given you the best, which is Jesus Christ. He says, if he gave you Jesus Christ, how can he not through Jesus Christ freely give you all things? The best and the biggest he has given to you. What is your problem to him, my friend? What is your problem? What is your problem? Your father got you. He got you completely covered. He's given you all the things that you will ever need. You see, all things that pertain to life and godliness has been given out to us through Christ Jesus Christ. He says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. He says, He is the one that gives us the power to get wealth. Let them magnify the Lord and say, and delight, who delights in his own promises. He says, He has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. What else can he not give you? Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? If we can meditate on his words, you will see fear will just melt away. It will just fly away. Fear will go away. It will melt away. Because when we have confidence in the word of God, fear will have no place in your life. You don't want to attract those things that you fear about because they will come. It's natural law. Job said, said that. For the things which I greatly fear is come upon me. And he says, and that which I am afraid of is coming to me. When we fear, we open the door for the enemy, Satan, and all his mysteries to come and do that which we are afraid of. Because now we have left the place of confidence, the place of protection, which is God. We've departed from his own territory now. And now we are in a very vulnerable place where Satan can come in and do those things which we are afraid of to us if we don't want to give him that opportunity bible says you resist the devil and he will flee from you and it says give no place to satan give no place now uh, uh, if 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 you will pay attention to what the word of god says i can assure you that you will not be disappointed. It was Charles Spurgeon who says, It does not matter how heavy our troubles are, if we can cast them on the Lord. It doesn't matter how heavy the troubles are, if we can just cast them upon the Lord. It doesn't matter. Regardless of how big you think they are, just cast them on the Lord. And he will take care of them. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me. Now I'm going to talk about how to deal with worries. How to handle worries. Because uh, it will not do you any good. If I talk about a worry, worry, worry. And don't tell you how to handle it. So now I'm going to tell you how to handle worries. So that it does not affect your life. That you will always come up as a victor. You will always be a success, a wonder to this generation. 
because that's who you are called to be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when 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 worry comes up, when when anything comes up that will cause you to worry, if any situation or any circumstance that will cause you to worry, the first thing that you want to do is to replace that worry. Replace that worry with what the Word of God says. Get a Bible concordance. Find out what the Word of God says about that situation. I want you to replace that situation with what the Word of God says about it. Now, worry will come to us sometimes. It will begin with a thought. Just a thought in your mind. The, the enemy will bring that thought in your mind. Even before you begin to see physical evidence, the thought will come up first. When that thought, when it comes up first, I want you to cast it down. Cast the thought down. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, the Bible tells us what to do. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalt itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Casting down every imagination. When you picture the situation in your heart, in your mind, it says, cast it down. When they thought, when they come up, it says, cast it down. Do not entertain the thoughts. That will be the biggest mistake to do. When they show up, you cast the thought down and what else you're going to do? Replace it with the word of God. I'm going to give you examples on how to do this so that you will not miss out on this. Let's assume that you are having financial difficulties. You are worrying about how to come up with uh, some payment or how to handle some situation that needs money. And the war is coming up, it's coming up, it's building up. The thought is coming in, in your, in your mind. What are you going to do? I say, cast it down. So you say, I refuse to worry about this. Replace it with the word of God. Find what the Bible says about it. So you say, I refuse to worry about this situation. Bible says that my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I believe in God. He will see me through this and he will provide for me. Are you hearing me? A good example on how to deal with it. Let's assume it is sickness. You have symptoms in your body. And you're trying to, you begin to worry about it. why is this sickness is going to go? What, what is the next step? Is this going to be on to death? How am I going to take care of this? I don't know what is wrong with me. When that worry is beginning to come up, all you got to do is, I refuse to worry about this. I refuse to worry about it. Jesus Christ already took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. That's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. Therefore, by his stripes I am healed. I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me? And you will see the worry will go away. You replace it with the word of God. That's why it's very important that you know what the word of God says pertaining your situation. If you don't know, find a concordance and find out what the word of God says about it. Why? Because God will always watch over his word to perform it. Let, let me give you another example. Let's assume that you are uh, afraid of death. There are people who are afraid of death. So scared of death that they, they are paralyzed. If there is a situation, say, I refuse to be afraid of death. The word of God says, with long life, he will satisfy me. The number of the years of my life, the Lord will fulfill. I will live long and I will not die. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Are you hearing me? And now when you speak these words, you will see faith from within will rise up and dissipate that fear that is trying to cripple you. Are you hearing me? Let's assume you are, fear of, you are scared of accident. So scared to drive on the road or fly in the airplane because you are so scared that there will be an accident and perhaps you might die. 
<laughs> are you hearing me? Because people are afraid of so many things they worry about. People are afraid of overeating. <laughs> people are afraid of, uh, of violence. They are afraid of uh, something happening, you know. So, so many things people worry about. That is why it's very important that you know what the Word of God says about all the situations. Now, let's assume it is accident. So, you're going to stand bold and say, I refuse to be afraid of accidents. The Bible says that the angels of the Lord always encamp round about me and deliver me from every destruction. Therefore, I will not be scared. I will go in and I will come out. I will go out and I will come in. There is no fear of accident in my part. He has given his angels to keep charge over me. They will always dam me up lest I dash my feet against his stone. I will not be afraid. Are you hearing me, my friend? You will see, you will see, uh, you will see fear will take up on wings and fly away. That you will never see them again. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me give you another, uh, um, another way what, how to deal with fear. If not the most important one. It is found in John chapter 6. Verse 33. I probably misquoted that in the beginning. I, I think I said Matthew 6 33. I think it's John 6 33. And the Bible says, Seek forth the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you. Seek forth the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. If you want to live a worry free life, this is the key right here. Seek for the kingdom of God. And someone will say, what is it? What does it mean by seek for the kingdom of God? Make kingdom things your priority. Let the things that pertain to the kingdom of God be your number one concern. Finance kingdom projects. Give to the kingdom works. Let it be a desire in your heart to see that the work of God is progressing all around you. And God says, if you will put me first, all these other things that the hidden seek, he said, I will add them unto you as extra. Wouldn't you be happy that you don't have to do anything about them? God says that uh, they will be added unto you. It's an addition. It's an extra. Let the things that pertain to the kingdom of God be so desirous in your heart. Finance kingdom projects. Give into the ministries. Make sure that the work of God around you is progressing. Invest in the kingdom of God. And it tells you here that all those things that will bring about worries in your life, the things that will cause you to worry, God says, I will take care of them for you. This is a very important principle. If you lay hold of this principle, the worry that you, that you, 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 you will not see them come. This worry will not come in the first place. Reasons that will bring them about will not come. Because God himself in his infinite oh, faithfulness, he says that he will take care of those things for you. Blessed be his holy name. Now let me give you another one. Acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Remember if you're born again, the moment that you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ, the, the moment you receive him as your Lord and your Savior, the Holy Spirit moves in you. Now he dwells in you. So be always conscious that the Spirit of God abides in you. That he will never leave you nor forsake you. When those things that will cause you to worry, when they come up, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in other tongues. The Bible says he that prays in a known tongue edifies himself. 
You charge yourself up. He says, you, you hear that praise in non tongue, speak with uh, secrets, mysteries. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Remember that uh, the Spirit of God, Bible says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Let the Spirit of God be your guide. Let Him lead you. Trust the Spirit of God that He will show you the way out of that trouble. He will speak wisdom unto you. He will give you the light, the way to go. He will direct your path for you. Lean not to your own understanding. Remember that the Spirit of God is in you. And He is there to help you every day live a successful life. Is the Spirit of God not bigger than your troubles and your worries? So acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. Take advantage of it. Talk to the Spirit of God. Ask Him for light. Ask Him for direction. The way you should go. Ask Him the, what, how, the way to go about it. When to go about it. And He will speak to you. Are you hearing me, my friends? Make the Holy Spirit of God your best friend. Make Him your best friend. He has His ministry in you right now. And He's not there just to sit down and just watch. To help you. He is your advocate. Your helper. Your comforter. Your strengthener. The one that will stand always by you. The one that will come together with you. And lay hold of your infirmities. Are you hearing me? So, recognize the presence of the Spirit of God. He will be always available to help you out of your problems. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember in Isaiah chapter 28 verse 12. That's why I say pray in the Holy Ghost. He says, this is the rest where which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. He's talking about praying the Holy Ghost. The, the rest. Whereby you will cause the weary to rest. Since this is the refreshing. Praying the Holy Ghost. I know there are so many Christians who don't pray in the Holy Ghost. They don't believe in it. But study the Bible. It tells you more. You will find out. If you want to know more about it that is one of my teachings if you go to my archive on youtube simple truth gospel with kirian that is a teaching they are called bible simple truth about speaking in tongues and you will get so much out of it that you will see that oh that is a refreshing that comes when you pray in the holy ghost blessed be the name of the lord jesus christ now remember what i said earlier that when these thoughts when they begin to rise in your mind, because it, first of all, is the enemy who will plant the thoughts in your heart, in your mind. It is the enemy. So, instead of you thinking about them, the Bible tells you what to think about. So, you got to put like a, a bouncer in your heart. You know, like a bouncer, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you got to put like a bouncer in your heart. <laughs> Because the mind is a doorway to your heart. So you're going to put it right there in your mind. That's why you're going to put the bouncer right there. And you're going to follow what Philippians chapter 4, 8 says. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Put a bouncer there in your mind. And when they toss, when they try to arrive, this is what you're going to do. I'm going to read that verse to you. I'm going to read it to you first. And then tell you how to apply it. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, Whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report. And he says, If that be any virtue, If that be any praise, Think on these things. It tells you what to think about. So when that thought comes in, you gotta check. Go to the list and say, is this thought is this thought true? Mm, no. 
So you close the door. You bounce it out. You got no place in my heart. Cast it down. Is this thought, is it, is it honest? This thought that is coming to my mind, is it honest? Uh, no. Out. <laughs> Shut the door in front of it. Is it just? Uh, not really. Out. <laughs> Kick him out. Is it pure? Uh, I don't think so. You kick him out. Bounce him out. Is it lovely? Uh, not really. You bounce him out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Is this a good report? Uh, not really. Not really. It's a mixed report. I, I don't... Close the door right away. Are you hearing me? Is it of a good virtue? Is it of praise? If it's not any of these things, Bible says, do not think about them. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I, we have talked about so much today about worry and how to deal with worry according to what the Bible says. Remember, you can worry from now till next year. It will not do you any good. Instead, it will bring all kind of uh, physical problems to your health. Jesus Christ, the master himself, tells us, he says, do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In the world, you will have so many problems. He says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He did it for you and I. And now his Holy Spirit lives in us to strengthen us, to give us the ability to enable us to overcome worries and the things that come up against us. Remember in the world, I, if you are in this world, they will come. I have not said that they will not come. But what I'm saying is when they show up, you got to deal with them accordingly. You got to deal with them because if you are in this world, where Satan is the God of this world, the Bible tells us, the prince of the earth, where he has influence over this world, these things will come against you, especially when you were a Christian. Persecutions and things like that will come up. But Jesus says, be of a good cheer. He says, I have overcome the world. And in my name, I have given you the authority and the power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And nothing by any means can harm you. Let us listen to the word of the master. The great teacher himself. And let us be led by the spirit of God. He is in us. We are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. He is in us. To help us. To lead us into all the truth. To show us the things that are yet to come. To teach us all things and bring to our memory the things spoken to us in the word of God. Friends, let us become aware of the indwelling presence of the Spirit of God in us. That we will always stand bold and overcome knowing that Jesus Christ has already done everything for us. And all we got to do is by faith receive as a gift that which he has done for us. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've come to the end of today's teaching. If you're listening to this teaching and you are not yet born again, or you are a member of a church, but you are not quite sure if you're born again or not, and the reason is because you don't know what it means to be born again. Friends, to be born again means that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your sure Savior. You believe that he died for you and God raised him up from the dead on the third day. And now you invite him personally, personally. No one's going to do it for you, but you, you invite him personally and say, Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you this day to come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. You receive that righteousness of Jesus Christ. And now you put aside your own righteousness because the bible says that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rag menstrual clothes if you want to put it that way in the presence of the lord that's how you see he sees your own personal righteousness and the reason why so many people inside the church are not born again is because they are going about their own righteousness 
they are not going through the righteousness that is only found in Jesus Christ. His own personal gift to us. They are going about how good they are, what things they have done right, comparing themselves with other people, uh, giving themselves a pat on the back and say, I am doing this thing, I am doing that, and I am doing that good. This is why many people are not yet born again inside the church. The moment they lay aside and get away from their own personal righteousness and step in and receive the righteousness that only comes from Jesus Christ, then they will become born again. That is what it means to be born again. So if you are listening and you are not yet born again, today is that day. The moment has come. This is the time to make that proclamation, to make that declaration, to make that confession, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your own Savior. So, remember there is no other way around it. Jesus Christ himself, talking to Thomas, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no one will come to the Father. No one comes to the Father but by me. There is no other way around it. There is no other name under heaven that is given among men whereby we must be saved. But the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do not say that I belong to one religion or the other. That I believe in God the Father. Bible says that if you don't believe in Jesus Christ. If you don't have Jesus Christ. You cannot have the Father. If you deny Jesus Christ. Means that you have also denied the Father. So there is no way around it. All you got to do today is to receive what he has done for you. He's not asking you to do so much. You see, he paid the price. And now salvation is a free gift to you. You receive it by faith. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will sup with him. It is something that you got to decide for yourself. He's not going to force you into it. He is not. Don't say, let me go and get my acts together and then I will come back and I will be born again. Don't do that. Do not boast about tomorrow. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 27 uh, verse 1. It says, for you do not know what tomorrow will bring. Don't put, it, don't put it off any longer. The day that you hear his voice, he says, harden not your heart. Today is a day of salvation. Now is a accepted time. Don't put it off any longer. The Bible says that uh, uh, David was talking to Jonathan. And he says, there is but a step between me and death. There is but a step between me and death. In 1 Samuel chapter 20 verse 3. I want you to look at it this way. There is but a step between you and the eternal life. And that step is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you receive him today, you will have eternal life. If you die, you will have eternity in the presence of God Almighty. Remember, everyone who is on this earth will live forever. Yes, when the spirit of a man leaves his body, he does not die. But he goes to two locations. Is it that he goes up to be in heaven if the person was born again? Or he goes down to hell if the person rejected Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? There is only but one sin that can send you to hell. Remember, hell is real. It's a place. It's a place of torment. It's a place of torture. It's a place of darkness. It's a place where there is complete absence of God. So there is one sin that will take somebody there. And that is a sin of rejection of Jesus Christ. If you do, if you reject him, that's the only destination. There is no thought or middle ground. It's only up or down. So my friends, remember Jesus Christ says, If you believe not that I am he, you will die in your sins. And he that believes in the Son 
has everlasting life. He that believes not in the Son of God, he says, there is no life in him, and the wrath of God abides in that one. You don't want to have the wrath of God abiding in you. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, come, he says, and he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat, buy without money, come, come, salvation is free, it doesn't cost anything, the only thing it costs you is to believe and confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. The moment has come again, friends, do not let this opportunity pass you by. I'm going to lead you now in a very short prayer. If you will pray this prayer with all your heart. And you believe in it. Believe in it. Today, right now, this moment, you will become a child of God. Your old life will pass away. Your old nature will pass away. And the new one will begin. Are you hearing me? Well, so pray this prayer with me and mean it with all your heart. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that he is your son, that he died for my sins. And you raised him up from the dead on the third day. Jesus Christ, I ask you this day to come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that I'm now a child of God and that I'm born again. That my sins are washed away. And my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Father, I give you all the glory for this. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, my friend, congratulations. I welcome you to the kingdom of God. Now, there is a, an experience that is subsequent to salvation. And we call it the infilling of the Holy Spirit of God. It's another experience. And uh, if you go through my iCarve on YouTube, Simple Truth Gospel with Kirian, you will find a teaching there titled, Speaking in Tongues is for Every Believer. It will help you. It will lead you. It will guide you. It will tell you. It will teach you what you need to know about being filled with the Spirit of God and, faith and speaking with other tongues. I want to use this opportunity to thank all the partners of this ministry all over the world. Those who are helping us preach the gospel to many places in the world at no cost to them. If you would like to become a partner of this ministry, to this ministry, and help us reach even more people, please go to our website, www.kuim.org. And there is a donation button there where you can securely give. Or you can write us using the address that is showing on your screen right now. Remember, it is only those who hear the word of God and they put them in practice. Just like I thought today about how to live a worry free life. It is only those who will put these principles and apply them in their lives that will get the result of the word of God. Surely there is an end and your expectations will never be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, shall I candle up a great day? Ekne daskar aram kanto yara kisko muska. Manda kisko la kanto kisko 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 kisko